بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد Welcome back as we move on to the 25th chapter Surah Al-Furqan which has 77 verses and the meaning of its name Al-Furqan we're told that it is min asma'i al-Qur'an al-Karim that it is from among the names that the Qur'an has so our Qur'an is known by many beautiful names and this is following true in the tradition of the Arabic language that something which is of high value and importance, it has many names by which it is known. And the Qur'an is also true that Allah Ta'ala gives it many different names as He Himself, the Surah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is known by 99 beautiful names that we know of. And Allah only knows how many more that He Himself has for Himself Subhanahu. We're told, And the Qur'an is named Al-Furqan because it is the differentiator between false truth and falsehood. It is the discerner between what is correct and what is incorrect, what is right from what is wrong. وَسَبَبُ تَسْمِيَتِهَا The reason why it's named Al-Furqan دَلَالَةُ هَذَا الْإِسْمِ عَلَى الْمَقْصَدِ الْعَامِلِ سُورَةِ Because the chapter as a whole and all that it's focusing on, it is the differentiator between false truth and falsehood. Allah Ta'ala through all that He's focusing on in this chapter, makes the two stand apart from each other to be very clear from each other. There's no other names that we know of for this chapter besides this. And, <coughs> excuse me, the general overarching focus of the chapter is ma'rifatu ahli al wa sifatihim To understand who the people of falsehood are by their traits. Wa ahli al wa sifatihim As well as knowing the people of truth based on their traits. And so there's indicators to be able to discern and, the, and to know who is a person that's of, of truth and who is a person that is of falsehood. But what about the reason it's revealed? We know that it's a Meccan chapter. We don't have anything for the chapter as a whole, but we do have that which is authentic for some of its verses. Its merits, we're told that لم يصح حديث أو أثر خاص في فضل سورة سوى أنها من المثاني that there's nothing authentic about the chapter that we know of, except that it is from the chapters that are of the Mathani. What is the Mathani? These are those chapters of the Qur'an that are, that are less than a hundred verses, that are from this poor point onwards. And the, the reason it's Mathani, meaning that it's repeated because it's read more frequently, more often than the larger ones that have over a hundred verses. What about the relationship between its beginning and its end? We're told that al hadithu an a'mal al kuffari wa da'awatihim ila al haq. That we are told about the deeds and the actions of the disbelievers, those who reject the truth, and how they are being called to the truth. So Allah Ta'ala begins the chapter saying, وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ آلِهَةً they have taken, besides Allah, other gods, other deities. And he says, concluding the chapter, قُلْ مَا يَعْبَأُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْ لَا دُعَاءُكُمْ فَقَدْ كَذَّبْتُمْ فَسَوْفَ يَكُونُ لِزَامًا What would my Lord care for you, if not for your supplication? For you disbelievers have denied, so your denial is going to be adherent. You are going to have to deal with the repercussions for having chosen to deny, to reject. But what about the relationship between Al-Furqan and Nur? We're told, اللَّفْظِ وَالْمَعْنَى That Allah Rabbul Alameen is showing a congruency here between the word as well as its meaning. How's that? Allah Ta'ala concluded Surah Tanur, which is light and guidance, saying, Ala inna lillahi ma fi samawati wal ard. Behold, indeed, Allah's are all that is in the heavens and on earth. And He begins Al Furqan, the discernment, the criteria, by saying, الَّذِي لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ He is the one that is the sovereign of the heavens and the earth. So subhanAllah, the chapters, light is a form of discernment, dispelling darkness, and in the beginning as well as the end, 
Both of them are making it clear that Allah is the sovereign. His is everything that is of his creation. La ilaha illahu subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah Rabbul Alameen to always provide us with that light that will be a discernment for us in this life so that we can have criteria between what is false and what is true, between what is wrong and what is right. And in doing so, that we can be from the best of his worshippers and that we can be blessed with the best of this life, but most importantly, that we'll have the best of paradise for eternity. Allahumma rabbana ameen. Wa salli lahumma wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.